glowing eyes at night, robotic drinks in moonlight, soda dreams take flight. Here is how I made a tiny Japanese vending machine. A few months ago, I went to Japan with some of my friends, and we had an amazing time. We ate a lot of great food, sang a lot of karaoke, saw a deer in our park take a giant shit. But yeah, overall, it was a really amazing time. Now, as most of you may know, I'm not exactly the most artistically blessed individual on this planet, but one of my goals for this trip was to change that with the art of photography. Now, I don't mean to brag, but I've been told by some friends and family that I do have some natural talent in the photographic arts. With that said, talent isn't everything, and I had a burning desire for improvement. While I was on the plane to the country, I read a book by Henry Carroll called Read This If You Want to Take Great Photographs, and I learned a ton from it and got really inspired by a lot of the pieces inside of that book. When I actually got to the country, I focused a ton on composing my photos, finding interesting subjects, and in general just being more intentional with what I was actually shooting. And I like to think that by the end of the trip, my skills had actually improved quite a bit. When I got back home, I had a ton of photos that I was really proud of, many of which had a lot of fun memories attached with them. I threw them on the cloud and looked at them from time to time. And after a while, I thought to myself, I want to do something with these photos. It'd be a shame if they just sat in the cloud waiting to die. I thought about printing them out, but I don't have a reliable color printer. I do have a 3D one though. I also didn't want to go through dozens of physical frames because there were multiple photos that I wanted to showcase in the real world. The next thing I started looking into were these digital picture frames on Amazon. And they seemed to work and be relatively affordable, but they just looked extremely boring to me. It almost screams really bad elementary school yearbook photo or that one relative that you don't know whether they're still really alive or not. Soon enough with me being a maker, I decided that I wanted to try building something on my own. I wanted to take the general concept of a digital picture frame and put it into something more aesthetic, unique, and less professional looking. Given that I took all of these pictures in a country known for its stunning countryside, rich history, and beautiful temples, I wanted to pick something that was reflective of all of that. So I chose a vending machine. For those of you who haven't been to Japan, vending machines are one of the main attractions of the entire country. Pretty much anywhere you'll go, you'll find one of these colorful, somewhat retro looking, but modern looking at the same time, boxes of enticing magical drinks and sometimes other crazy stuff. I thought it would be a perfect fit for a picture frame since it's very boxy and has a very large focus point. Instead of displaying drinks, I could just remove that whole part, throw in an LCD screen and kind of display photos in a very unique and aesthetic way. On top of that, the shape is really simple, probably as simple as you can get, which means that with my 3D modeling skills, I could actually get something done. With the build decided and my brain divided, I started to cook. I started out with the electronics first on this project because I personally didn't have any experience displaying images on an LCD screen using a microcontroller. So I figured I would just get the hard part of this project out of the way from the very beginning. I went online and I ordered an Arduino Nano, which is a small computer that can run code and do things as well as this tiny LCD display from Adafruit. The first step here was to actually wire the screen to the microcontroller, which was kind of a pain. Now, don't get me wrong, Adafruit does have pretty decent documentation on how to do this, but personally, whenever I have to wire more than three pins together, it all kind of starts to look like ramen noodles to me at that point. Eventually though, after a couple mistakes and, you know, moving pins around, I got everything connected and ran their test program on my Arduino and verified that the display and connections were at least working finally. Mm -hmm. 
The next hurdle was actually loading my own images onto the display. If you haven't worked with Arduinos before, you should know that they usually don't have that much onboard memory. So I would need to store my pile of photos onto a micro SD card, read from it somehow, and then write it to the screen. The LCD screen that I bought actually already has a micro SD card slot already, as well as some documentation on the website on how to use it with their software, which was a pretty good starting point. Their example sketch, however, only loads a single image onto the screen by file name, which wasn't really useful for me because I had multiple photos. Thus, I wrote my own code using their example sketch as a template that basically goes into the SD card, checks for bitmap images, and then cycles through each of them on a rotating cycle of 10 to 20 seconds each. Now that I got the screen working, the software was pretty much ready to go. However, there's an obvious problem just looking at things here. There is no way that this giant mess of wires is going to fit inside of a tiny miniature vending machine body, at least not without looking really goofy. Thus, I decided to condense all this wiring by designing a printed circuit board, which would basically allow me to remove all of this mess here. If you saw my last video on making my pair keyboard, you might recall that I used a program called Ergogen to generate a KiCad file, which basically gave me a circuit board design for free. However, since the open source community for tiny miniature Japanese vending machine picture frames is a lot smaller than the mechanical keyboard community, I wouldn't have that luxury here. As a beginner in KiCad, which is the program that I'm using to create the circuit board, it was definitely a bit overwhelming at first, but there were a lot of online resources that helped make it a bit more bearable, so I'll link those in the description. It was basically a matter of creating a circuit schematic and then going into the actual PCB layout and moving things around there, and then finally connecting the routes together at the very end. After using 99% of my very, very, very limited brain power, I ended up with something like this. Now that I actually had the board all designed and ready to manufacture, I had to get it manufactured. But where? Do you know the way? I think I know the way. Luckily for us, the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, is coming to the rescue. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything and everything PCB manufacturing and assembly. They have a variety of different services like PCB prototyping, assembly, and even CNC and 3D printing services, which is awesome. That's basically all you need to make technology. For this project, I used their standard PCB prototyping service, and it was so, so, so easy. I added the Gerber and drill files to my order, chose from their wide variety of colors, hit purchase, and I was pretty much good to go. The shipping was also really fast, and within a few days, these babies came in the mail. From there, I soldered some female pin headers to them so I could easily plug my Arduino and LCD display in without linking the components by fate. I generally do this so that I can reuse components between projects without desoldering, because if you've ever tried desoldering, it freaking sucks. After plugging in the components, I ended up with something like this. If you're interested in trying out PCBWay for your next project, check out the link in the description to learn more. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, let's go into the next part of the build. I started taking measurements of this electronic contraption and started designing a vending machine themed housing for it. Overall, it was pretty simple since vending machines are not necessarily ergonomically complicated. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why I chose them for this project. I drew up a rectangular box, added some holes for the screen and mounting holes, and also a hole for the USB-C port, and finally a cap to cover up the insides. Before finishing things up, I also made a small rectangle that I could attach in the space between the LCD module and the circuit board. If you didn't notice in the last few clips, the connection point between the LCD screen and the PCB is pretty wobbly. So this rectangular piece would function as a spacer to ensure that the joint wasn't taking too much pressure when the pieces were being pushed together. From there, I threw everything into my 3D printer and let it rip. So after pulling the parts out, the spacer was pretty much perfect. It was a little short, but achieved like 70% of its life purpose, just like me, so I was pretty happy with it. The vending machine casing, on the other hand, was a complete disaster. Who would have thought that taking measurements while watching YouTube shorts on four hours of sleep would result in completely incorrect measurements? 
I guess probably everyone, huh? When I try to mount the electronics inside the case, pretty much none of the screws or ports aligned properly, and I was actually about to redesign the entire file. But that's when I remembered. I wanted to take the general concept of a digital picture frame and put it into something more aesthetic, unique, and less professional looking. Say less. So I busted on my soldering iron and started melting the absolute crap out of the holes to make them fit with a power of 365 degrees of heat. After putting the case through some pretty kinky heat torture, I was finally able to mount the electronics inside. Problem solved. At this point, I definitely had a box now, but it didn't really give much of that vending machine aesthetic that I was going for, so I decided to do some decorating. I covered up the screen and spray painted the mounting bolts white so that they would stand out a bit less. In the meantime, while that was drying, I printed out some Chikawa images. If you don't know what Chikawa is, well now you know. My printer's color is super messed up, so I had to print things in black and white and exercise my own coloring skills. I like to think that I didn't do that bad of a job, but also, it was tough. I took so long trying to color within the lines that the spray paint from before had actually finished drying. I cut out the assets that I printed and used some chapstick to basically glue them onto the body of the vending machine and ended up with the final product in all of its glory. Overall, I'm actually really happy with how things turned out. I think it looks just enough like a vending machine to where it brings back all the memories of my trip, but just not enough like one to where it never makes me want to pursue a career in hardware engineering or design for the rest of my freaking life. Since it's powered by USB-C, I can pretty much put this thing anywhere, and as long as I have a power bank or outlet, I have my photos on display 24-7. I also like the fact that my extremely clever design made it pretty much impossible to access the micro SD card without disassembling the whole thing, pulling out the electronics, and you know, I think this really figuratively and literally locks my memories into the device, which is beautiful. I'm gonna need to buy another micro SD card. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like to support the channel, and if you want to see more builds like this that are eccentric and kind of bad, be sure to subscribe. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Pair out.